research document, um, and it doesn't it, it doesn't drift too, fur, too, too far from what your uh, for, from what your uh, research proposal document can look like, and what really any piece of writing from now onwards really should look like for you. I wanted to add that even though uh, Cole's taking it and he'll be talking about putting it together, including it in his report, it's pretty much the same. Research is you ask a good question, you make sure you've asked it well, you make sure you go about answering it in a way that is credible so that people will believe your answer, and then you get your answer, work it out with analysis and synthesis, then you have to write it up and explain it quickly. We may not even have heard of your topic, let alone the question, let alone the data idea. Yeah. So research writing is quite a complex thing. It's one of the things that's so that one of the reasons it's so highly prized and valued by employers. Employers who aren't in the research organization, they just want employees with that set of skills. And yeah. so the writing up skill set, whether it's quant focused or quote focused, yeah. is a core essential really to And I've got to tell you it's it's in a way, this is just button pressing. If uh, like it's, it's uh, Lois and myself were having a discussion discussion this morning. I'm not a bad button presser, and I think Lois, um, who teaches in uh, fundamentals of leadership in the MBA, she believes there are people who are natural button pressers and people who are natural thinkers, but uh, that the, they don't come to the table with generally with both sets of skills. So I. I remember I got told by my supervisor on my first draft, you're doing a lot of stuff there, but I don't see a lot of thinking going on. You know, you had a, you, you're actually not making an argument in your thesis because you're too busy doing stuff. And that was, that was a bit hard for me to hear, but I reckon he was right. Um, and then there's the other side, and Lois said she pulled out of a PhD because she didn't, she said she couldn't focus herself well enough to be able to to be able to narrow her topic, but also report on her topic. So that's um, that's sort of what I wanted to do here. But really, gee, if we don't have the tools, you know, it's, uh, if we, you know, how can you how can you win the uh, like a Formula One race if you can't just drive your car down the road and park it? Um, and so, in a way, maybe what I'm showing you here. If, I apologise if I'm doing stuff that is uh, that is just too uh, too basic for you. But let's just walk through it, and if I get the feeling that you're falling asleep, we will um, uh, we will uh, move more quickly. We've done this. I started writing these slides in a way that good. Let's walk through this process of doing these things with a data set. We will do that. But then I thought, actually, uh, let's walk through the process of doing it with a data set and transferring it into something that actually makes a bit of sense. So we'll get through this stuff, and um, there's plenty of stuff. Uh, there's plenty that we've got a data set called the Delhi Depot. Um, it's even smaller than the lunchtime at business school. Um, it was certainly smaller than the uh, assignment data set, backyard barbecue. But Hopefully, we're not scared by this sort of stuff too much, um, and we'll get to it. Um, forget it all for now. Let's go through the building a document. So, so we'll make it real with Delhi Depot. Let me remind you, SPSS is your friend. Um, it uh, it scares us because it's the unknown, but um, it it puts a whole bunch of sophisticated techniques into the hands of us mere mortals. We're not Kate's uh, defence science and technology organisation friend who can build first principle models on Excel, um, and I never will be, but I can, I can press buttons on SPSS. Uh, so, uh, so, and these other beautiful tools, Microsoft Word, Microsoft, uh, Microsoft Excel, and perhaps EndNote, but I've, all I really did with EndNote for you in this course was advertise it, tell you that it's something worth you pursuing, uh, and I won't, be, I, won't be doing, I won't be asking you to do EndNote drag and drops for this. Um, and I don't think I'll be doing it because I'm on the wrong, sort of, the wrong PC for that. So I reckon the way, the way to do this, crunch the numbers in SPSS and Qualtrics, it's just that our data sets are sitting in SPSS, not in Qualtrics. But the reality is, 
crunch the numbers in SPSS, and that's where you get the what test do we do and what tab do we run, all of that sort of thing. Take the, take the crunch out of SPSS and put it into Excel, because Excel has got great tools for making things look nice. So, so we drag that stuff and build the pictures in Excel, and I'm talking about actually like taking tabulated means, like the actual table of means or, or frequencies, dragging that into Excel, because I didn't show you that much of that the other week, drag that into Excel um, and build a pie chart, build, a, uh, build a, um, some line charts, all of that sort of thing, and then write the document in Word. I've got to tell you, we've got to be able to drive this car. The, Microsoft Word's been around for 20 years now, and, um, and it's a sophisticated vehicle. And at the moment, many of us are only using it to within like 10% of its capacity. If we, if we increase that to 15% of its capacity, our reports look and read way better. So I'm going to start at the end. I'm going, to, I'm going to ask you, please help me out with this. Some of you have done really well with it, and, and this is just like you get to canter through this. But um, can I get you, open up your PC and, um, and get a Word document open. So uh, let's all do that right now. I'm going to do it right now as well. We get a Word document open, no problems at all. You're, yeah? <laughs> I'll get to it sometime, Paul. Um, let's just roll through this. Uh, we've got Word open. Um, and look, have a look up here. I know many of you know, if I've, uh, and, and I won't, this will be the last time I apologise. Um, I'm, I'm going to name it. Um, I'll save as, save as, and... Um, uh, Put it on the desktop because I once had a Mac and everybody does that, don't they? Uh, BRM Word doc. Get it named so that I can just hit um, BRM Word doc. Excellent. Um, so uh, put a title like uh, uh, putting it all together. Now, what was I telling you to do? Open it, name it, yep. Um, this, this thing, the heading styles thing, the, you know, you're in, you're doing high school mi Microsoft Word. If you, if you write a sentence and then you bold it and you increase the font and you think that's a heading. You're not, you're not using the tool the way it should be done. Let's write things that would be the heading. Let's write introduction. Uh, introduction, uh, describing the data, further analysis, further analysis, um, conclusions, recommendations. Okay, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put some placeholders in there, even if it's just gibberish. Put some placeholders in there. They would be the words we'd be writing when, we, uh, when we're doing our writing. It's a sensible way to do this because, as I said, you're not really using the tool the right way. Look, for the major... Oh, no, I'm going to do it. For the major title, highlight it and go up here, click title, putting it all together. Now, perfect world. If you're writing a PhD, you can modify this style sheet, this template, and you can make the titles look the way you want. No problems at all. But at this stage, why don't we just go with the heading styles as they are formatted right now. Um, we've got introduction would be a heading one. 
highlight that, hit it. And I'm going to pull this down so I've got a little bit of room. Um, introduction. So heading ones are our major level headings. Pretty sensible. We then, let's pretend we've got some minor level headings. Um, let's say we're describing the data we do, uh, the respondents. Some words in there about the respondents. Um, preferences. And we do some words in there around preferences. You can see that the way that I'm thinking, I'm thinking that, all right, I'm going to describe the data, but I'm going to describe the respondents and then I'm going to describe their preferences. But it's all a subcomponent of describing the data. That's why we have a heading level two. So the respondents and preferences. So you can see that gives us slightly different headings. I'll tell you what I might do here. Heading two, I might... Uh, select all of those heading twos, I might modify it and I might uh, put an indent on it. Format, tabs, no. I know what I'll do, I'll italicise it just because... There we go, so now I can see that they're different things. So you can see how you can manipulate this style sheet uh, to to uh, to do that stuff for you. I missed Paul's pop up. What was that one? Ah, uh, yeah, yes, that's uh, Paul's. Paul's just made a point there, which is pretty clever, saying uh, I'm giving away ninja study tips, and that is there it is. Um, ninja study tips. Uh, write the rubric he rubric headings out and make them heading one. Then answer each heading. Um, and it might, and in a way, this the the it's actually probably the outline for your Delhi Depot uh, for your uh, for your uh, quant assignment. We've actually got an outline of uh, of how the report should run. But uh, Paul's got it right. Is uh, is you don't have to make these headings up as I've given them to you. Look, I would add um, a refinement. It's sort of like that's a good solid pass to call your like. Live on start, this now. Uh, that's a good place to start, but then come back and rename them with something indicative. Hmm. So instead of writing methods, write um, <clears throat> which method you use. So um, uh, oh, yeah? for, for me, I, I might write sense making. Or, or, or something like that. For your lit review, you, you might, um, you, you, you would put your major topic. So um, my, my topic might be uh, password management in uh, secure focused organizations. Yep. And so it's called that instead of called literature review. And who's For one doing showrooming? I can't remember. Is uh, Zeal? Yeah. It is Zeal, isn't it? Yeah, good on you. Yeah, so you would be uh, your literature review instead of being the word literature review would be the the uh, the emergence of showrooming uh, as a marketing challenge, something like that. And and that's it's not literature review. Yeah, good. That's that's because it shows creativity. Remember what I said in that in that ten minutes before for the people who turned up at nine thirty. I said act like you're doing an investigation. Act like you're, you're Elliot Ness trying to work out what the answer is to the stuff you don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah. It also, think of your audience. If, if your examiner or your boss or whoever reads literature review, it tells him nothing. If, if he reads um, <clears throat> uh, password management and security focused organization, he knows exactly what he's looking for. So his brain's already in the right place to read what you're writing. And also, if you think in terms of people Googling for you, they're much more likely to find you with those sorts of topics and headings. Yeah. All right. So, okay, ninja study tip. This I got this from a person who's now the executive dean uh, in of, of humanities at Flinders. I think she was the uh, she was the um, uh, research uh, well, 
Pro Vice Chancellor of Research, I think, for, uh, for uh, the business division of UniSA as I was doing my PhD, and this was her tip. Use the magical insert table of... Co I better find where it is to begin with. Table of contents. Where's our table of contents? Somebody else would probably know better than me, wouldn't they? Paul, can you tell me where my table of contents is? <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. It'll be there. Worst case scenario, Google, uh, I know that uh, SPSS is your friend. References? Table of contents. Legend. Thank you, mate. I never pretend I'm the font of all the knowledge. So under references, table of contents, um, and there it is. It takes your heading one, heading two, and it, uh, and it just lays it out. So Phyllis was saying to me, Phyllis was saying to me and to a research seminar at the time, that is a beautiful tool for organising your logic. If you've got 400 pages, you're going to need that. So, uh, so why not get with this program altogether? I can say, describing the data, the respondents, preferences, right, further analysis, conclusions. Okay, so, so use that. And then if we get really excited, and I've got respondents, preferences, attitudes, I go, right, okay, okay, I've thought about that. I'm going to put an attitude section in. I can highlight it. I can home, call it heading two. I can go back up here. I can update the field. Uh, update the entire table. Oh, look, attitudes. My thinking has just stayed clear, even though I'm just rambling through and writing and, and adding areas. Um, and same old story if I decide to make attitudes as a, uh, as a heading one instead, um, and then I can come back here, update the field, and update the entire table. Oh, look, now I can see that attitudes is its own chapter. So it's all pretty cool stuff. So, and that, that just means your life gets way more simple. All right, so what did I say we should be doing next? Oi, there's my giveaways. Um, headings in place, dummy text, change style to heading one. I didn't even show you the, uh, I didn't even plan that I was gonna put the table of contents in there, but it's important. All right, I'll tell you what we do now. Get anything that you want to put in as a graphic. I'm just going to do a control out print screen uh, of of that um, uh, of that, uh, um, and I'll put it under further analysis. So we've got text, and I've put in my graphic there. Fantastic. Table, you're putting your tables in. Your uh, so. You imagine you're going through the process of creating stuff interesting. Here's a picture. Here's a table. Here's, yeah, yeah, here's a screenshot of a website photo, in a qual phase, photographs of, I don't know, an oil spill or whatever it is. But uh, you put something in that's useful. Um, don't get caught with this whole manually putting captions on them. It's, it's, it's just not the way Excel, uh, SP, Microsoft Word is supposed to be used. Get with this. Do... So I right-clicked on, on the, on the uh, piece of graphic, insert caption, figure, figure one, and I'll do a... I'm going to put it... This is a trap for young players. Position below selected item. Never like that. I put it above the selected item. Figure one, figure one, screenshot of, uh, of uh, my uni. No problems. Okay, there it is. So we're going through, we're talking about stuff. Cool. And then we've got a screenshot of my uni sitting in there. That's pretty handy. But the beauty of this all is that we, uh, that, that we uh, see below, see below. Um, see where we present a screenshot of the my uni interface cool um, see below what what like 40 pages below you know why don't you refer to uh, uh, to the thing 
If we go, wouldn't we love to say, see figure one below? And uh, you can type in figure one, but what happens if you put something in in front of it? You've got to go through the whole document and change figure one to figure two. Um, so it's just fraught with danger. Why don't you do the easy stuff? And what we do here is we put where we were going to put the word figure one, references, it's a cross reference, and instead of numbered item, we scroll down and find figure. We don't want to put the entire caption in because that's a screenshot of my uni. How about only label and number? and we hit insert. Oh, how nice is that? See figure one below. That's put in as a live field. Look, I'm just going to play the game there. Edit field. You know, so I learned this a long time ago. Format, lowercase, and it means now see figure one below. Oh, how interesting. You know what that means? You know what that means? If we put a different figure in, let's put this figure in. I'm going to get all, going to get all inception on you. Let's put this figure in. Oh. Okay, put that figure in and we're doing something and then we go, all right, we label it. Remember what we did? Insert caption, figure, above selected items. That's now going to be figure one, isn't it? Of course. So, oh, I better edit that. Actually, I'll pull it out because I can't remember what I, how, to, how to do that. So, insert caption, figure one this document cool okay and it's there now we have a problem don't we oh no it's already updated figure two screenshot of my uni just became figure two. Oh, how clever and the comment above we have a problem so what do we do here update field see figure two below so we can just scroll through the document hit update fields it'll just tidy all that stuff up and you're, you're using the tool the way it was meant to be used. All right, so, so I hope I'm not using time to do stuff that's not useful to you, but there you go. Um, all right, I wanna, um, there we go, cross-reference it. We've done all that, very nice. Let's go to the bottom here. I'm gonna show you one more thing because we're, uh, I'm trying to, trying to get you out of those, those you know, those newbie mistakes that just mess with your brain. Why don't we do appendix? Appendix, and then we, we highlight it, go back to our home, I'll create it as a heading one, no problems. What I'm gonna do here, I want appendix, the stuff after the appendix, I wanna be all in its own world. I don't wanna have, um, I don't want to have uh, the, the uh, formatting from, uh, from the previous part of the document. A little trick here, if we do insert breaks, page layout breaks, and we do section breaks next page, that, that totally breaks off a whole new section. So if I put newly formatted stuff in there, then it's not going to mess with the document. I'll show you what I mean. If I put next page in there, it puts a next page break in. If I show you a different format, uh, look, I'll go with that. It has, it's, I can't see where it's letting me do the format I want, but there is a next page break in there. And I'll show you why I want to do that. I'd suggest, why don't you go back into my uni? I've already done this, but why don't you go back into my uni and pull out this Delhi Depot. This is under under ses session six Cullen. So uh, you may have already found it, but it's under uh, content by session uh, session six Cullen. Um, there's our putting it all together. Here's some other stuff, but uh, the Delhi Depot dot doc. Okay, it's not critical if you can't catch up and get this document, but I just want to show it to you. I've got the Delhi Depot dot doc is sitting there and oh look here's a copy of a questionnaire all with its own formatting um, I don't want to be messing with anything there um, I want exactly this to turn up uh, in my document so I'm going to highlight it control C then I'm going to go back to my word document 
I've p remember I've put a section break next page section break in there, which just completely isolates this next bit. I hope this goes well. And I'm copying that in. And look, it's copied in. Nope. I might go to the bottom and do. Uh, I might back out of it and then. And Keep source formatting. That's what I did. Uh, no, no. So, so what I can do here with paste options, I write. No, nice try, Paul. But I, I reckon I've got the answer. I right-clicked. If I do use destination theme, it spreads it all out and makes it a bit yucky. If I use keep source formatting, it uh, it brings it in exactly the way that it was. See. So I'm going to go with keep source formatting, and we now have exactly the the thing that I had copied. All right, just a way to keep yourself out of trouble. Why, why give yourself that heartache? So, so yep, yeah, okay, we might have some messing around to do, you know, while we do our own pagination of our own things here, but still, it's nowhere near as bad as that double spacing that I ended up having. All right, so, see what I did there? I introduced you to that Delhi Depot uh, uh, data set. Um, and that's where we now move to start thinking about, all right, right, let's. Uh, I can kill that because it's now in my document. How neat would that be? Oh, look, here's the questionnaire that we sent. It's, uh, it just, it's as uh, tidy as we like. We'll see what, where I am with my up to PowerPoint business. Uh, that's that one. Oh, of course, yeah. Well, let's yes, exactly. Let's. I'll do that. I know that you made the you made the suggestion landscape, but if you imagine this, we've got a document and we want to put something sideways. I'll tell you what I'll do. First thing I'll do, though. Thanks, Kate and Paul. I must say, um, yeah, I'm going to. I don't know quite what I'm going to do there. All right, so what I'll do here, insert, uh, pa sorry, page layout, breaks, next page break, uh, next page, page break. Remember, that's drawn a whole circle there and I can get on with, append we might call this appendix two. Very cool. Appendix two, we hit the, uh, we give it a heading. That's all cool. But imagine we've got a sideways table here that we think is really important, goes sideways. Because we've drawn a next page break above the questionnaire and below the questionnaire, we can decide that we're going to turn that sideways, page layout, orientation, landscape, and that turns that, that questionnaire sideways, but keeps the other two bits either side in there in their um, portrait orientation. So, um, so yes, Kate's got Kate and Paul had exactly that. So, little bits and pieces. All right, I'm going to take that back. Paul's clapping, and there we go. So, all right. I hope that was uh, that was a few minutes, but please hang on to that. I'm going to probably keep this recording for, uh, for even for my MBA students. I'm going to put it up there and say, look, it's a no-brainer. Use the, use the tools you've got. All right, but beyond that, let's go to uh, something I consider fun, and that's opening up and looking at a data set. So let's open that. Uh, we've, oh, yeah, we've, we've already done that looking at the Delhi Depot Word file. And so this is an introduction to the data set. The data set's 200 people, 200 respondents. We ask them perceptions of, des description of Delhi Depot. Friend do you think they have friendly uh, employees, competitive prices, competent employees? We will remember that this is a uh, uh, that this is um, interval data. Uh, their rating scales. They lend themselves really quite well to uh, to factor analysis. So there's that. Uh, the next section we did was some classifying, describing the dis uh, respondents describing themselves, uh, gender, 
recommendation, satisfaction, um, how often they turned up, how far they drive to get to it, and then uh, in what order do you think uh, that fast food is important? You know, put a one against uh, uh, the, your most important and a, a two against your second most important. We know that in, uh, in Qualtrics, we create that as a drag and drop. But, uh, but in the old paper days, that's what we've got. Remember what we do, if, we've got it, if we have to do a paper-based questionnaire, which I don't think any of us should have an excuse to do that, we should just get an, an iPad and then run Qualtrics on the iPad as we walk around run the mall. If we're doing a face-to-face, -face, click, 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 no problems at all. Data is immediately coded, straight in, not a problem at all. But if we ended up having to do some paper-based questionnaires, let's get, yeah, got that poll. Can't use Qualtrics offline. I, I totally get what you're saying there. You found the flaw in my, in my um, rant. But, uh, but if you have to do it on paper, come back into, into where you've got a, a connection and, um, and, um, and enter this through Qualtrics. It'll code it. The other way, old school, you actually write the codes into SPSS and key that stuff in. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yep. So there we are. That's... Um, yep, we, we're talking about the, uh, the data collection, no problems at all. That gives us a pretty tidy little data set with about, I don't know, how many variables, only about 17 variables, and gives us something to talk about. So if you haven't already done that, this is something you do need to do, is get hold of the Delhi Depot data set. Okay, so uh, I'm going to come around, make sure we've got SPSS showing. Yeah. So go to, um, you'll find it in um, uh, content by session. Yeah. I'll just show you in case that, because I said go find that data set, and, um, and you're right, I probably... Uh, finding that Delhi Depot data set, is as easy as we come back to here's the announcements here's me telling you don't um, um, let's make sure we're here nice and early on time all of that sort of stuff um, so if we go into content by session session six cullen scroll to the bottom of second session six cullen and there's our delhi depot dot save all okay i'm seeing an spss screen there Great, no problems. That'll, if you hit OK, it'll pop it up there. Good on you, Beatrice. I saw your email. I spoke to Janice yesterday, uh, yesterday afternoon. It's all good. Yeah. You're right, mate. Sweet, sweet. Anybody want to put their hand up in case they're caught? Probably not. You, you've got your, you've got the, <laughs> you've got your, uh, your, what's the word? The wallpaper showing. <laughs> Shall I get you to, oh, you were running. Are you running on your on your Mac? Oh yeah, good on you, good on you. Got it, River? No, go to no, it's okay. So scroll back up, go to uh, the session six, Cullen at the top. Yep. Uh, da, da, da. Session six, Cullen. That's the one down the bottom. Delhi Depot dot save, and then there you go. That'll uh, that'll you save that. That'll put it in that little arrow up on the top on your yeah. Firefox. And then you're live. You're all cool, aren't you? Raymond, looking good? Oh, you're running off your map? Yep. I found out the other week how good the, uh, uh, the ADAPT is. Um, it is really good. You can run SPSS wherever you are in the world as long as you've got a, uh, uh, a uh, good data connection. Um, and Paul might disagree with me on this, but, uh, but I... I think it's working pretty well. It's going to be a godsend for us for uh, for running this as an online course, and for if I if I'm running it with Singapore people. So there's our there's our data set. Remember what we do. It's almost exciting, isn't it? When you get a nice data set, we say right, we know what the questionnaire looks like. 
Um, and um, so we've got X1 friendly employees. X, it's called X1. It's friendly employees. We look at values. We can see, we click on this three dots and we can see that one is strongly agree, uh, strongly disagree, 10 is strongly agree. Um, so, yeah, there's a little little coding issue in there. I'd be tempted, I'm not going to do it right now, I'm not gonna mess with this data set. I'd be tempted to put those anchor, to take those anchor la labels out and just leave them as one to 10 um, in, in the data set. And you'll see what I mean in a, in a moment. But anyway, we can at least see that there was one strongly agree, 10 strongly disagree. If we double click on that, we can see that this data has numbers Remember what that's doing here, it's clicking between variable view and data view. This data has a bunch of numbers in there. Wow, what a pain. How are you going to know how many ones, how many threes, how many all of that are in there? Somebody must know that. SPSS being our friend will, uh, will do that for us really easy, but we'll, we'll come back to that in a moment. So we've got those rating scales, we've got gender, zero female, one male, um, definitely not recommend, definitely recommend on a seven point scale. Satisfaction on a seven point scale. Uh, light user versus heavy user, zero to one. How far you've traveled, come from within a mile, one to three, came from more than three, fantastic. And this rankings data. I'm never particularly comfortable about I can't think of really clever things to do with rankings data sometimes, but, uh, but, uh, but, uh, but at least we know what our data set looks like. So how do, we, uh, how do we go through the exploring process on this? Delhi Depot Word file, keep rolling. Um, oh, I gave it away. First way to make sense of the data set is run a frequency table. So when I said, oh, we're looking at this data, oh, X1, oh, how many threes are there? It's, there's 200 records in here. I don't, I don't want to go through and manually count. How do we click those buttons for it? How about analyze? Analyze uh, descriptive statistics frequencies. When, we, when we're on frequencies, we can, uh, we can put them all in, but let's just go with how important do you consider friendly employees to be? Friendly employees, look, I'm gonna put a histogram in because it's, uh, so I clicked on charts and I've said, give me a histogram as well. So I've built a frequency table. So first thing we, uh, so I hit that go button. Remember where it brings up the other screen, which is the uh, output screen. And here goes our output screen. So for how important is friendly employees, there, was, there were 12 people who said strongly disagree and right up to 16. Our histogram looks like that. And we're traveling. Now, here's, here's the game. Let's, let's just do this. So it's not on that list of things to do that I said, but if I right click, I can do copy special um, I'm going to do, um, this, this is a, a little tricky, uh, SPSS doesn't, doesn't play nice in some ways. Hit the image as well, because otherwise, otherwise you're not going to be able to paste as an image. So when you do copy special image, and then let's go back to that magic word document. Here's our magic word document, and we go to further analysis, describing the data, the respondents, preferences. Hey, I've actually got something to talk about here now, haven't I? So I've copied as an image, right click and paste. I think that's as good as it's gonna get. Yep, that's worked okay. So I've got the histogram. Remember what we do here? We can do insert a caption, Figure one, uh, preferences for friendly employees. Cool. Figure, above selected item, no problems. Working. All right, that's just a, a little aside. 
so you can copy the the but you know SPSS generally gives us really shabby looking graphics okay I've got a soft spot for SPSS uh, histograms because I've grown up with them but uh, but I wouldn't be spending too much time on on that now though remember our really remember what I said that Excel is a tool for uh, Excel is one of our friends Excel is a great tool for formatting I think Excel is just starting up yeah I think Paul's asking me the question that I'm just working the answer up for so I've got Excel seems to be Excel should be starting up but oh here it is it's just playing a little trick with me I opened up as a minimized window never mind so I've got my Excel running shut this remove the files no problems at all um, I'm a little out in my everyone's got an Excel everyone's done it I didn't check with you but you did a frequency table didn't you so uh, so there's a it's quite amazing how well this uh, it's quite amazing how well this uh, SPSS output keys in or connects to connects to uh, to Excel uh, so I, I've just hit the copy special button it's copied as an image as well because I don't really care I'm gonna hit OK and then I'll go back to, my, to that Excel document that I built and I'm gonna see what formats it'll give me oh look at that a regular paste and a paste as destination formatting which one do I want I don't know I think I'll, I might go with just the I might put them both in so I have to then oh look it's got percentage I have to then work out what I'm going to do with this um, so so you can see what I'm, I'm doing here we've got strongly agree uh, importance of friendly employees I don't know would anybody copy and paste in that format into uh, into into your document are you sure you can get away with it Uh, but it's clumsy isn't it if I if I if I was you could you could copy straight out of SPSS into your word document there but um, so if I go like that and I can copy most of the time I copy when I build a table I copy it as a picture I paste it as a picture uh, then I don't have to deal with Word documents messing up the formatting I've done in Excel. So let's say, actually, no, I'm, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go back to Excel and make things a little more more neat. I'm going to unmerge that bit. I'm going to pull out that. I'm going to unmerge that bit. I'm going to, and I'm sorry if this is stuff that you don't know, but it's, I don't want to spend too long being an Excel uh, instructor. I'm going to change that. Strongly disagree. There's no adapt SPSS in the lab. No, they're all using live. We're all using live SPSS in here. Paul, it's one of those um, one of those fringe benefits, I suppose, of being on site. Um, I'll uh, page layout home. Uh, uh, you know how we get all get confused once we big box border. Excellent. Um, look I might give it a yellow tone up there and I know this is no but you can at least see I've done some formatting I suppose um, and I'll I'll put that across here I'll merge that uh, friendly employees one to the top um, merge and center and put importance of actually I'm going to leave that out entirely because that can be my caption label good so I go like that and remember I paste I paste as a picture because then it puts it in as a PNG or a JPEG it means that from there onwards it doesn't matter whether I 
go copy into a new Word document, it'll always be a, 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 a JPEG. Some people, some people don't like that because they want to change the table in their document, but I reckon if you're down at the point of changing your table in the document, you're, you're, you're not using the, the programs the way they're meant to be used, I feel. So if we hit that, we put that in, how pretty, put a caption in. Um, of course, this is a table, not a figure, isn't it? So table, above selected option, um, and because I'm lazy, I'm going to steal that and go to importance of friendly employees. Lovely. Um, table, above selected item, no problems at all. So there we go. We're starting to talk data. We're starting to make data work through Excel, a bit of formatting. But um, now I suppose part of what we asked you to do was what is the, uh, what is the, uh, um, uh, uh, give me some graphics. That's what I was, had been saying. So I am going to do, I'm going to copy those cells over. I'm going to give this a label that says importance level. I might see that everyone's getting that happening. You all right, Pizza? Yeah, good on you. Oh, yeah. Look, you, oh, you're doing... Yeah. yeah. Anyway, look, at this point, I'm, uh, at this point you're, uh, you're quite welcome to do whatever it is you want to do. That looks cool. Yep. However you want to be formatting it. This is actually where some of the creati creativity in your quant reporting um, should come about. Yeah. You should be fairly straight to the, you know, with with the process and the assumptions and all of that, but you want to be creative, format your tables, create new, new, uh, um, create new visuals. Look, I'll just do this. I'll pull this frequency out and delete. And I think we should be able to, if, if I've highlighted all of that, I should be able to do um, insert chart, 3D pie chart, and at least we've started to, we've started to, uh, to, uh, to draw some pictures. I don't like the look of that 3D pie chart. I'm going to put this. percent reporting and highlight again insert chart 3d pie chart percentage reporting and yuck a little better pull that out and you can go till your heart's content now. Um, at least there's one of the charts that you might create in, uh, in Excel. These new versions of Excel have uh, sweet, cute looking little uh, graphics there. But, uh, so I've just hit, um, I've just copied and histogram and paste as a picture and I've now got a chart in there that says percent reporting importance level. Okay, so for me to... That's pretty much... We've done some tables, we've done some pie charts, um, and so that was my, my process of working us through how to make these things all work. I'm not a one for trying to format things in Word, table formats, all of that sort of thing in Word, but you've got to have your own thoughts about how you might do that. Um, 
I think the next thing we need to do probably is actually the the number crunching data analysis for for through this. We might do a new recording on that, Kate. It's a uh, Bora. We might uh, we might upload that recording and then create a new.